On this episode of Real World DevOps, we present Double Nat Dilemma. <laughs> of course, what do I mean here? Well, basically, I have a scenario where I have fiber internet, no public IP, and I want to fix it with DevOps. And in fact, this is a very personal story for me because a couple years ago, my wife and I bought a farmhouse on 12 acres of land, and we didn't have any good internet, but now we can actually get gigabit fiber internet for $100 a month at our farmhouse, which is absolutely amazing. The problem is there's no public IPs available. In fact, they use CGNAT, which is carrier grade NAT, in order to provide connection to the individual houses like here, 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 and of course our farmhouse. Now, if you're not familiar with CGNAT, that's okay. It just means that our internal IP addresses have no direct access to the internet itself. It has to get routed through this private IP range. And then finally, we get a public IP address, but every single one of the residents of my little town here shares a common IP address going out. So there's no way to port forward and run services at our farmhouse, which is a bummer because it's gigabit fiber. I just want to have for services there. And so what I've done is I've used DevOps to actually fix that problem because right now there's no way for people to get into my farmhouse because if they try to get into the public IP, it's going to get blocked at CGNet. So I came up with a solution using DevOps tools. Here's what I have set up. Inside my farmhouse, I have a server called Farm Docker. Now this is a private IP and it's just internal to my network. And then it's blocked from the internet by the CGNAT of my ISP, which means that I don't have a public IP address. But because it's using CGNAT, I can get out to the internet. So here's where I got a little sneaky. I bought an online VPS or virtual private server from a company in Canada. And I actually pay a whopping $3.32 a month to have this server. Now this server is very small. It has like one core and I think it has one gig of RAM, but it has unlimited throughput, meaning there's no limit to how much data can get pumped through this server. And it has a public IP. <laughs> so here's what I've done. I'll draw it out and then I'll show you at my farm exactly how it works. So farm docker has a container that connects to NatBuster up here and forms a VPN connection. So it goes through CGNAT through the internet to NatBuster and then it establishes this connection and then I use NatBuster's public IP and that's what people connect to and then it's routed back through this already established port into farm docker and i serve multiple things i actually have a plex server running and plex pi which is a way to look at the plex server activity on my server and it's all automatic it boots up and just goes so here i'm logged into farm docker and this is literally my farm docker server at my farm that we're logged into right here from this lab machine so i'm going to say docker ps and i want to show you what's running on my actual server so i have the open vpn client this is a docker container i got from docker hub i didn't create this i'm just using it and it sets up the vpn connection to NatBuster, that server in canada and then this is my plex media server it actually uses the network stack of this docker container so this one uses this container stack same with this one Tautui, this is the PlexPy. This is the administration or monitoring server that keeps an eye on my Plex server. This is also using the network stack of this open VPN Docker container. And all we have to do then is reach out to NatBuster and we can reach my Docker server even though there's no external access to it. So if we just do HTTP colon slash slash NatBuster, I have it running on port 8181. We'll see, here we are logged into my farm server over the internet. This is from our CBT Nuggets lab environment. So I'm going through the internet to that computer in Canada, NatBuster, and I'm accessing my personal Plex media server. And it looks like there's some of my kids are watching The Bachelor and Mulan and The Grinch and Modern Family. So all of this stuff is going on even though there's not public access to my farm itself. Now, if you're thinking this seems a little shady, I will be honest, I contacted our ISP and I said, look, I'm setting up external access. Am I like voiding any terms of service or anything? Because I don't wanna lose my fiber, but I really wanna have external access and he said it was fine. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you should go out and get fiber internet and then get a public IP from a remote server and use DevOps to VPN and allow external access. 
But what I'm saying is that DevOps is awesome at solving problems like the double NAT dilemma. It's a real issue that I had to solve in Docker and VPN. It was just an amazing way to solve the problem and it's been working reliably for months.